Okay, in this video I'm going to have a look at mass energy equivalence. Now this comes from chapter 10.2 and now I've called it B. It's the second part of chapter 10.2, page 282 from the New Century textbook. Uh, this is in the syllabus um, under the topic uh, to do with uh, special relativity and it's just one of Einstein's uh, formulations that mass and energy are equivalent. Now what you would have learnt back in Unit 1, which was Chapter 6, well, we did it in about Chapter 6, you learned that energy was proportional to mass. Now, in other words, the change in mass of something um, was proportional to the amount of energy produced or used um, in that conversion. Now, you <coughs> used it in um, that chapter in this form. Delta E equals delta M C squared. Now that's Einstein's famous equation. Now that's how it'll appear in the formula book. So you don't have to learn it, that's there. You'd have to understand what the terms are, of course. It's normally written as E equals MC squared. Now that's a famous equation you've seen all over the place, and most people would recognize that as Einstein's equation. The proper way to write it, or the better way to write it, is like this. The problem with this is it implies that if you had a mass of an, o an object with a certain mass, you could convert it all to energy, and if you multiplied the mass of the object times the speed of light squared, you get the energy. And that would be a massive amount of energy because C is 3 by 10 to the 8, squared, it's a big number, times mass, you get a huge number. What people often think is that you can convert any mass into energy, and they'll often say you can, you know, run power plants by just con by taking a certain mass and converting it to energy. If I took a ruler, for instance, now this is just a steel ruler, it's about 10 grams. Now that's 0.1 of a kilogram. Now, according to that theory, you could just multiply 0.1 of a kilogram times c squared, and you'd get, I don't know, about um, 10 to the 16, 10, something like that. Um, joules of energy. Now you, obviously you can't get that, that's a billions, billions of joules of energy out of a ruler, you can't do that. That would be enough to power Australia for a week. So you can't do it. So the formula is a bit misleading in this form. It's better to use it like this, where this is the change in mass. So when you react something, you look at the mass to start with and the mass to finish with, and you take the two away and you get the delta M. Now you did that last year, or in the previous, in Unit 1, when you were talking about binding energy, you worked out the mass of all the constituent particles of an atom, and you took that away from the mass of the atom itself, or the uh, nuclide itself. So you added up all the protons and neutrons and electrons, and subtracted that from the mass of the nucleide, including the electrons, and you got a delta M value. Okay, let's do a couple, just so you can see how we could use that. Now, in a normal power plant, the, you'd, let's imagine you had some uranium-235. Now that's a typical uh, source of uh, energy in a nuclear fission power plant. Take some 235, let's say we took a kilogram of that. Now when that undergoes fission, it splits into all these different uh, substances, usually two major fragments plus a few extra neutrons and a bit of gamma and so on. Now when that undergoes fission, a lot of energy is produced. But you actually only have a delta M value of about 0.8 of a gram. So that one kilogram of fuel loses, if you like, 0.8 grams of mass, which is equivalent to a certain amount of energy. Okay, and that energy is in the form of the kinetic energy of the products, the gamma rays, the heat, and so on. Now let's have a look at a conversion. So one kilogram of uranium has a delta M of 0.8. So if we use our formula, delta E equals delta M, so that's 0.8. Now that's in grams, so we need to convert that to kilograms. That's, so that's by 10 to the negative 3. It's the same as dividing by 1,000. Times 3 by... 10 to the 8 squared. <coughs> so that's C squared. So you multiply that out and you'd get 0 0.8 uh, 
uh, look I'll do this again just to show you how it works the problem students often get into here is they when they're using the calculator they put in 3 times 10 to the 8 squared but they forget to square the whole lot and you end up getting 3 by 10 to the 16 and that's a common mistake often in multi-choice questions one of the wrong options will will be allowing for students who forget to square the 3 as well and so it'll be out by a factor of 3 um, now that just comes to 0.8 times 9 is 7.2 times 10 take 3 away from 16 and you get 13 that's the answer in joules okay so 1 kilogram of uranium 235 when it undergoes fission it has a mass defect of 0.8 of a gram and that's equivalent to 7.2 by 10 to the 13 joules now that's that's a lot that's million million more than a million million joules and that's only from one kilogram undergoing fission so that's a huge number now <clears throat> what I'd like to do is to talk about what you're expected to do on an external exam <coughs> excuse me <coughs> if you look at the objectives <coughs> it just says you should know about uh, mass energy equivalents <coughs> It doesn't say you have to be able to do calculations on it or solve problems on it. The solving problems is about <coughs> um, <coughs> is about the uh, momentum, uh, time dilation, and things like length contraction. So they're the ones that you'll have to solve problems on. In other words, do numerical calculations for mass energy equivalents. It just says to know about it, basically to describe it. So the it seems to mean that you won't get a calculation on there but by doing a few calculations it helps you understand how the energy and mass are related so I think it's worthwhile doing a few there's a few in the textbook like that <coughs> um, the <coughs> the thing is um, the question might be describe mass energy equivalents and then you'd have to say well uh, a change in mass during a reaction a nuclear reaction um, leads to a proportional amount of energy and you could actually give an example if you liked and how you'd work it out if you wanted to if it was a three mark question where you had to describe it that'd be something you could do now it could be multi-choice it's more likely to be multi-choice it doesn't get a very big mention in the um, in the objectives in the syllabus so it could be just multi-choice uh, and you pick one out what I'd like to do is have a look at another question but using the the term you used for mass defect in unit one was units of mass defect AMU or units and I'll just do one more using units rather than grams or kilograms um, just to show you um, <coughs> how it works now the same thing again when uranium 235 undergoes fission one atom of that you'll find has a delta M of about 0.2 units now it can be written as units I've written as units in the textbook uh, but it's also written as AMU which is atomic mass units it's the same thing now so one atom before I talked about one kilogram producing so many grams of mass defect I'm now talking about one atom and let's have a look at how much energy is released by one atom of uranium when it undergoes fission now the relationship here 0.2 of a unit we know that delta M will be equal to 0.2 of a unit times the mass of a unit in kilograms which is 1.66 by 10 to the negative 7 uh, 27 so that's how many kilograms one unit's equivalent to and that comes to 0.332 okay now that's now in kilograms and so you just substitute that in to your equation so I'll use this one here delta E equals delta M which is now that times C squared now I told you before C squared is 3 by 10 to the 8 all squared which was 9 by 
10 to the 16. Now if you multiply that through you get that's about a third of that so that comes to about 3 times 10 add 16 on to negative 27 and you get about 11 negative 11 sorry joules so when one atom of uranium undergoes fission the mass energy equivalence principle Einstein's principle tells you that 3 by 10 to the negative 11 joules of energy will be released okay and that's all there is to it but remember you may not you're not expected to do calculations or solve problems the syllabus doesn't mention it, it just says to know about it but if you can describe it with a simple example um, you'd be sure of your marks um, we might leave that there that's all for to, uh, for this section thank you